Comic Con. So great. Until I realize Living Scriptures has a booth at Comic Con. Living Scriptures has a bloody booth at bloody Comic Con. Welcome back to part three of Scripture is Undead. Nephi, back in brass. Yeah, I know. It's it's a stupid joke. Perhaps you uh, still think that living scriptures are accurate because they accurately follow the scripture stories portrayed in this book. Think again. I decided for my Book of Mormon project to watch the first. Living Scriptures, which is 25 years old, and just mark how many scripture verses they failed to cover or completely ruined when they tried to portray them. I came up with 20, and that's with me being generous. Well, in my one-man crusade against priestcraft, let me destroy your belief in their accuracy. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> okay, uh... Small confession here, my copy, when I tried to put it on the computer, was scratched and, you know, got a little glitchy in the process. This is after a couple of attempts to make it look nice. Believe me, you are missing nothing. And now, coming to you live, it's Richard Rich attempts to tell Book of Mormon stories accurately. The same guy who told the Black Cauldron accurately. Yes, it was a failure. Why? Because it wasn't accurate to the book it was based off of. And you trust this guy to tell your scripture stories to your children? You have serious... Oh Lord, what will you do to Jerusalem? This beautiful city. I feel like I'm going to be doing this a lot, so uh, I'll just remove them now. Great! We're not even five verses in. Already, he's telling it the wrong way. Oh Lord. What will you do to Jerusalem, this beautiful city? It came to pass that my father Lehi, as he went forth, prayed unto the Lord, yea, with all his heart, in behalf of his people. He wasn't praying in behalf of the city, he was praying in behalf of his people. I mean, how would you feel if I prayed in behalf of Provo instead of the people in Provo? I mean, how would you feel if I did that? Lord, what will happen to Provo? Ah! Fire! Quick, everyone, you must run away or you will be destroyed! Because the Lord has shown me that the Provo buildings will be on fire soon! Then call the fire department. Yes, I did not think of that. Good thinking! And it came to pass as he prayed unto the Lord, there came a pillar of fire and dwelt upon a rock. Um, excuse me, pillar of fire! You've got four rocks there that you could dwell upon! Just stand on one of those rocks and... This would not be inaccurate. No? All right, and it came to pass that he returned to his own house at Jerusalem. You must repent. Uh, did you... Did you just skip page two when you were writing the script? Because there's a whole lot of stuff that happened here to Lehi. Yeah, you, 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 are you getting this? You, do you see all of this stuff you skipped? I tell you, you must repent. The Lord has said, Repent! Yeah, um, uh... Quick question here. Where does it say he tells them to repent? Not every prophet calls people to repentance, you know? You assuming that about him means that you... You really don't see people as individuals, do you? How would you feel if I assumed that you were Don Bluth? <laughs> Actually, you would probably like it if people assumed you were Don Bluth. Probably get you more work, wouldn't it? Uh, don't I look glamorous, darling? What, you don't like it? Look at my rough-hewn pelt! Does this speak rich to you? No, it doesn't! I mean, look at this crunchy thing. It's just the pelt of an animal. Why on earth would Lehi, who is well-off and of noble birth, be dressing his sons like the bloody peasants? Harder. Father had the dream. The only one that looks half decent is Layman over there, and he looks like a prick! 
I'm sorry, I didn't know that caveman was an actual fashion statement in the world of nobility and riches in Lehi's day. You want to explain this choice to me? Father, when will we go back home? We won't be coming back. The Lord has promised us a new home in a new land. Behold, I have obtained a land of promise in which things I do rejoice. Okay, so he does say that he has a land of promise. After the Brass Plates mission. Lehi didn't say anything about a land of promise before the Brass Plates mission was over. Yes, yes, Nephi does indeed learn about that in the second chapter. But Lehi doesn't mention it anywhere in here. So, why is Lehi talking about a land of promise here if he doesn't mention it in the actual book until after the Brass Plates are gotten back to him? Father's telling the truth, Sam. I prayed, and the Lord told me. Of course, Nephi, Father's a prophet. As much fun as this is having Nephi praying and coming to know the truth for himself, Nephi didn't pray until after the big smackdown. <laughs> We're going to see Lehi do a smackdown! Uh, excuse me, I believe you skipped a few verses there. The Lord has commanded me to have you all go back to Jerusalem. Where is the epic lecture? Where is the epic confrontation? You there! Where is my bloody epic music? Okay. This is the real problem I have with representing ancient prophets. Not one of them is represented as human, interesting, epic, or with any distinguishing features. He's the prophet. He must be white-haired. He must be soft spoke. He must not directly confront anyone. Lehi was not that guy. There are some people in this book that you can argue are a lot like Gordon B. Hinckley. Lehi ain't one of them. He forced two violent complainers to come with him just with his words. This is not a guy who's a soft-spoken wuss. This is a really controlling father figure. Can we see any of that? No! Nothing interesting to see here, folks! The Lord has commanded me to have you all go back to Jerusalem. Back? Yes, Sam. To get the plates of brass. That's the book that has the teachings of the prophets. Okay, I'm letting the dream thing pass, but this is a problem. Lehi doesn't anywhere call these the scriptures until after they get them. All he knows is that they're a record of the Jews and they have his genealogy. They're supposed to go back to get their family genealogy record. Laban has those plates. If we don't have them, our grandchildren will never learn the commandments of the Lord in the promised land. We can't let that happen. By the way, do you totally love my smashing caveman vest? I wore it one year for a Halloween costume. I was Cohor from the Testaments. Seriously? None of you know that character? Lehman and Lemuel think I'm crazy to send you back. But you're not sending us. That's right. The Lord is. Lehi says, the Lord is sending you. Not Sam. As much as I want to give Sam credit that you actually gave him words to speak during this. Sam wasn't the one that said that. That was Lehi. Lehman and Lemuel think I'm crazy to send you back. Furthermore, Lehman and Lemuel didn't say it was crazy. They said it was a hard thing. All right, it's time. That's a scripture mastery. Let's see him quote it perfectly. He must be able to quote it perfectly. I'll go and do the things which the Lord has commanded. For I know that the Lord gives no commandments to the children of men without preparing a way for us to do what he commands. What? You couldn't quote that? Were you afraid of copyright? All right then. We all agree. Whoever draws the black stone will go ask Laban for the plates. And we cast lots. Cast, by the way, being a 
this sort of motion. Oh, oh me first! Sam? <laughs> it's not me! Fight. Your draw, layman. If it had really been drawing rocks, he would have said, we drew lots. Drawing is up. But casting, casting doesn't go up. It goes down. Why on earth did you even change this analogy? Were you afraid of kids becoming addicted to gambling because they saw Nephi throw the dice one time? Besides which, it wouldn't have been dice. It would have been sticks. There ain't nothing in here about Layman complaining that he drew the lot. I mean, cast the lot. Right, now you're confusing me! Th this is why living scriptures should not teach people about the scripture stories. Also, if I recall, Nephi is the one who described as large of stature, which means he should be taller and broader than his brothers. After all, you compare things to the things that they're next to. So, if Nephi is large of stature, he should be taller and broader than Laman, Lemuel, or Sam. Really, the one clue towards somebody's appearance, and you didn't use it? So you think you can do better than me? You have no idea how to deal with a man like Laban. I'll get the plates. Layman there is uh, definitely the wrong color to be part of this family. You saying something about Sariah's past here? First Nephi 3, 11 through 13. Layman went without complaint into the house of Laban. Doesn't say he said anything bad about his father trying to get those plates. And after he made this desire, Laban called him a robber and said, I will slay thee. Well, uh, let's see how many of those points they get wrong. You cheated, Nephi. Oh, so you think you can do better than me? <laughs> you know, and I know, that my father's just a crazy old man. If you ever come back, I'll have my soldiers kill you. Wrong. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. Anyone who says that this isn't priestcraft, why has no money gone into the remaster to make it look good? Yeah, this is the remaster, and I know you can't see it through the glitchy mess that it gave me because the disc is scratched, but I saw the VHS version, which is the original version, and they look exactly alike. That is priestcraft. You sell a poor product, in the name of spirituality, that is priestcraft. The Lord commanded us to do it, and we're not going back without the plates. Is our screenwriter allergic to direct quotes here? Because that ain't what Nephi said. He swore on an oath, as the Lord liveth, is a Jewish oath at this point. If you say, as the Lord liveth, this is a God would die before I would break this promise. And since that ain't going to happen, and these people are serious about keeping their word. That would have been a great thing to include. This isn't half enough. Listen, Laban, this is all you'll get. It's all we've got. <laughs> Truly award-winning screenwriting, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, Laban, this is all you'll get. It's all we've got. Oh, Sam, just when you were about to have a personality in a film that isn't about you, you get thrown under the bus as idiot sidekick number three. Why'd you throw Sam under the bus? He doesn't get any more popular than he does in these. Also, um, uh, where in chapter three does it say we did a Laurel and Hardy routine while Benny Hill music played? Uh, Lemuel and I will draw them off. Huh? Why me? If we give it to Laban... We're going to be poor! And I think we all should have stayed home. Also, anyone else tired of Lemuel's whiny voice? Never! I'm not gonna be poor! <laughs> it feels like I'm getting stronger! <laughs> Nephi, help me! I swear, Lemuel. Hurry, Lemuel! <laughs> Do know the guard could open that gate so you could pursue the people you suspect of robbery, right? Give us the gold. 
How do they know that they had an exchange of gold if they weren't here during that whole time? And so we hid in the cavity of a rock, or we just hid next to a rock. Laman and Lemuel did speak many hard words unto us, their younger brothers, and did smite us with a rod. That's a stick, and he ain't beaten Sam with it. Hello, poor animation, we meet again. Seriously, how does anyone not see how cheaply this was animated? Look at it! The only cheaper animation I've seen is Scooby-Doo, and that was from the 1960s! And you're telling me that this isn't Priestcraft because it's actually animated well? Have you watched it? Good animation! This! Good animation! This! You... You... You can't see the difference! And the Lord will deliver Laban into your hands. We'll go. <laughs> I just saw an angel. We can't go back there. Laban will kill us. We're going to have to, this time. The Lord has delivered him into your hands. But to kill him? Laban would have murdered you and your brothers. And he refuses to give up the plates of brass. The Lord has the right to kill the wicked, to bring forth his righteous purposes. If I don't slay him, I won't get the plates of brass. Then how, how could I teach the law of God to my children in the promised land? It's better for one man to perish than to let a whole nation dwindle and perish because of unbelief. But if you look in the scriptures for one second, it is better that one man should perish than that a nation should dwindle and perish in unbelief. Verse 14. Now when I, Nephi, had heard these words, I remember the words of the Lord which he spake unto me in the wilderness, saying that inasmuch as thy seed shall keep thy commandments, they shall prosper in the land. It's an important order. If you don't show this order, it looks like Nephi is just is just killing a guy, and that that's a poor message for kids to take. You can't come in here this time of night <laughs> unless you happen to be Laban. After I had done this, I went forth unto the treasury of Laban, and as I went forth towards the treasury of Laban, I saw the servant of Laban who had the keys of the treasury. Not I went to the treasury and there was a servant there. Also. Nephi has a disappearing fat suit. Where did, where did all this extra weight come from, Nephi? Where did Nephi get a fat suit in Jerusalem 600 BC? The plates of brass, mass. Give them to me. By then, are your plates of brass shiny and yellow and obviously gold? You're really going to confuse the kids with this one. Because they look gold, but you called them brass. The plates of brass are not supposed to be the plates of gold. They're two different records. I also speak unto him that I should carry the engravings which were upon the plates of brass to my elder brethren who were without the walls. Come with me. Oh, what? oh, good. The only reason the guy followed him is because he said, I carry them unto my elder brethren, and the guy assumes, oh, you mean you mean the elder brethren of the church? Okay, I'll come with you. I, I should be in high standing with them too. I just wonder if I should have packed a lunch. <laughs> there are no lunch sacks in ancient Israel. It's Laban. <gasps> He's killed Nephi. Why do you care, Laban? You wanted him dead earlier. I'm getting out of here. Laban! Lemuel, it's me! Wait, it's Nephi. Also, Sam fled too. It says so. Right here! Nephi, ho! Oh no! Zoram, stop! Ooh. Hang on a second, he don't know Zoram's name yet. I know this may not fit in with your plans, but... And I sat on him. We can't let you go back to the city. But if you promise to be loyal, you can come with us. As a free man, not a servant. Into it. He made an oath, and then they did cease complaining about it. Uh, you didn't get that? 
My father studied the plates of brass and taught us the word of the Lord. And I wrote down the things we did as the Lord commanded here on the golden plates. Those plates should be a different color than brass if they're the ones he's putting together as the small plates in Ephi. You need to make your characters memorable if you want us to care about them getting what they want. Why do people watch living scriptures? I just showed they're not accurate and they're not well animated. They're not well acted. They're not well written. So why do people watch them? I am done. I have nothing else to say. I just showed you 20 verses where this thing is not following its source material. Therefore, it's not helping you learn the scriptures. Ergo, it's much better for you just to read the scriptures. Read them with your kids. Read them! Read them now!